Good morning. Welcome back to Linda's Pantry. So today I was trying to think, what can I bring you that might be a little bit interesting? And I think we're going to test out um, rhubarb because it's time to pick, okay? Um, I'm going to try to show you how to pick rhubarb one-handed. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna try to show you. And that's if it doesn't rain on us. We've got a 90% chance of rain today. So let me take you outside, show you what I've done so far and what my plans are. I still don't have any roots on these. Um, yeah, no roots yet. Um, but that's okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. So let's go outside and see. It's, a, it's only supposed to be in the 50s. 50s or 60s, I get some conflicting weather reports. So I'm gonna leave, the lows are still in the 40s, so I'm gonna leave the plants out. And I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna talk to Michael about possibly, we're gonna take the old little chicken coop for the birds, the new birds, and either bring it in the garage and put a heat lamp on them, or, and that's kind of a hassle, or, the other thing we could do is put them in the covered kennel over here. We'd have to move some wood out of there, which I'm sure the grandbabies will oblige. Saturday, I'm putting them to the job of moving. We'll see how much Griffin gets done. And, and um, oh, Miller will have his own little wheelbarrow. Maybe he can help. But I want to get all that wood pile that the dog spread out, get that way out back, make a wood pile out there. Then they can go out there. Ooh, I got a little grape tomato getting ripe. Okay, so I need to water those containers back there. Give everybody a drink of water before I leave. And here's my rhubarb. So this leaf is definitely big enough. And I'm gonna turn the camera around for you when I pick because you'll get a better view. Okay, still haven't weed eat it because I don't want to. Oh, it's gonna rain, I can feel it. Ah, okay, I I put, actually, I filled in with compost, or the mulch, the grow mulch. I filled it in and kind of mixed the dirt in with that right there. And I'm thinking I'm gonna plant, um, I don't wanna plant the tomato plants there. The sprinkler hits right across that um, pretty hard. So I think I'm gonna plant a root vegetable there. I think I'm gonna actually plant some potatoes. And, um, and then tomatoes all this direction, and maybe, maybe, well, tomatoes this direction, there's enough room for quite a few, probably all I've got. And then I was thinking even over here, um, since they destroyed my asparagus bed, instead of having to put chicken wire um, on that, I think what I'd like to do is go ahead and plant um, peppers in there. So I've got a water. Let me take you and show you. Okay, this is our old chicken coop and our other birds that we gave to our friend. Ah, Michael didn't shut that water off. Dang it. Oh my gosh, my husband has not got home before 8 30, 9 o'clock in a couple of weeks now. And he said, please remind me to shut that water off at the valve. So I need to ask him, if please tell me what to do. We're leaking water all over underground here. I'm pretty sure that pipe is not secure. Okay. So that's the old chicken coop. We got this at Costco. Don't buy one. I mean, they're cute, but they're really not made well. I'm just saying, Michael actually built this setup, and it's covered. It's got a cover on it. Um, it's not completely enclosed, so you do have to be careful because, see, that's open there above the chain link um, for predators like owls and hawks. and ew. But the chickens go to bed. I don't leave a roost out here because they'll go in either that old coop. That's a coop with um, my last birds didn't use this at all, though. The only way they'll use it is if we don't have that in here as well. But the nesting boxes in the roost area in there, you can see. Um, and they've got, it's got double doors on the front to clean it out. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to move this, I think, to the garage. So they've got some room. We'll put plastic down and um, some shavings. And they'll learn to uh, sleep in here. 
and there are the nesting boxes. I got to get it all cleaned out. And there you go. So that's what we're going to do. And somebody asked, had I picked out the breeds I was going to get? And yes, I have. I want the red stars. They lay really, really early. And I want the um, black... Um, eh, what are they called? I can see it. <laughs> I just can't read it in my mind. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Okay. Oh, and this tree's leaping out. This little bud's here. Whoops. I always, yeah, they're right there. Getting some new growth here. All right. Um, Osterlorp. Black Osterlorp. <laughs> they lay um, almost year round. So. Okay, I'm just going to water everything, and then we're going to go to work, and then the nursery, because I need, four, I'm going to pick up four more bags of the grow mulch. Um, I need some over here. I could use some over on my raised bed over there, and um, it's just good to have on hand. And then I've got to uh, redo my whiskey barrels, the three of them there. Well, one of them's already got garlic in it, so I'll probably just redo the, the one with the old onions and... The other one and we'll get something in there like peppers or you know what's really fun to grow for the grandkids carrots they love them all right let's get to watering okay guys so I'm done with work and the nursery and I had to stop really quick and it slid two bags that were on top of the neutral mulch onto my six pack of lettuce I had to move it off of there I did buy a six pack of butter lettuce because it's got a pretty good start and we'll be eating it before it bolts when it gets hot. Um, and then I'm going to buy some heat tolerant lettuces to plant. I need to plant some radishes too. I got to get busy, you guys. So this weekend, me and the boys, as long as it's not pouring down rain, we're going to be digging in the garden. And um, so I bought four bags, four more bags of the grow mulch. Uh, a six pack of butter lettuce, butter crunch, and I bought the coolest row cover. I'm so excited. So it's like my other row cover, only it's got a net over it instead of that um, fabric, fleece fabric to keep it warm. So the sunshine and the water can get in and the birds can't get it. So that's going on my lettuce and kale as soon as I get home. And what else? Um, that's all I bought and that was like $60. Um, and then, uh, oh, my, um, the guy that I'm going to have Rotichel, as long as it doesn't cost me too much, he's coming either this weekend or at the latest by Tuesday when he does my neighbor across the street when he does her lawn. So I'm going to talk to him about taking over maintenance on the yard and see, you know, it'd be a lot easier on Michael since he has no days off now. And, <clears throat> or at least the front yard. Keep it looking chip shape and, and maybe we could do the backyard. That way we don't have to deal with dogs or anything. So I'm gonna have him price it out for me anyhow. But if we can get the rototilling in, then we're gonna get some gardening done. I'm gonna get gardening done regardless because I am ready. And I wanted to get you up to date. Okay, my fermentation start. I checked on it this morning and as I suspected the vegetables slumped down and so my weight had pushed some of the liquid out it was leaking thankfully it didn't make too big a mess so I took the weight out and everything is below the water I'm just gonna leave it like that it's, um, and then I um, covered it back up with the cheesecloth so nothing can get in no heebie jeebie deebie deebies and my broccoli as soon as I woke up this morning it was totally done and that filled my half gallon jar so about five pounds of broccoli will fill a half gallon jar um, of for broccoli so I think I want to start another fermented jar I'd like to have um, cauliflower and carrots and I don't know. I'll wait till I go to Costco and see what they have because um, 
I've got I've got the uh, cauliflower that I need to use up and I was gonna make pizza but I don't want to want to keep the cheese out of Michael's diet as much as possible so I don't know I have no idea what's for dinner <laughs> but mm. When I was talking to my sister-in-law, hi Heidi, and she um, she is going to start making kombucha again. In fact, she's going to try to get a scoby from her daughter. So she said once she makes uh, one round of uh, kombucha, then uh, she'll have a baby scoby that she can give me. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. <laughs> I need, I want to start making it, so. And she told me where she gets her organic black tea and all that, so I'm excited for that. I'm going to have to get that in my, in my pantry, and so that's all I know. I guess I'll see you at home, and I'm going to be wearing my chicken apron that uh, Jamie gave me because I don't want to get my white shirt dirty, and that grow mulch, or nutri mulch is dirty, so and heavy. I'm not looking forward to it. Anybody want to come over and move that for me? Leave me a comment in the comment section. All right, guys. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm home from work, the nursery, and where else did I have to go? I think that's it. Um, so I'm going to go out and show you what I've done so far. I got the coolest little row cover because the birds are eating my kale. They look like kale sticks. And so, oh, I fixed it and covered my lettuce too. They ate my lettuce down as well. I got four more bags of grow mulch. I'm gonna spread one out in there to mulch over this stuff. And then, um, oh yeah, we gotta pick rhubarb. Yeah. And this is what one of those seed pods looks like. It comes up on a stalk, you know, a round stalk, not a celery shaped stalk. And that little round ball there is a seed pod. You wanna cut those off your rhubarb as soon as you see them. And then that way it'll produce all season. But look how beautiful that is. It's gorgeous. I've never seen it that big, but I did mulch over this with um, chicken manure. Mm -hmm. That's right, I did. Hey, I mulched over the other one too, but apparently it didn't like it. So, okay. I gotta somehow keep Strut out of my raised beds. He just wants to walk right over it. Okay, so this is what I got. This is a row cover, and I had to come this way and then back it up that way. But it's got the netting. It's just like my um, police line or covered one. It's really pretty cool. Um, so the birds won't be able to get to it because you can see what they did to my kale. Can you believe that? Anyways, so I got some butter crunch lettuce. I put that in there. I'm going to water this real good, even though we're supposed to get rain, but I haven't seen it yet. So, um, this watered and oh shotsy do what was my shotsy do's are following me around like um i got a pork chop in my pocket okay and then i got seed potatoes <laughs> so i've got the other grow mulch the other bags are in the dump barrel dump wagon whatever you want to call it dump wheelbarrow um i want to i gotta get this soak down so I can get this out of here and mix it in with some grow mulch and same I'll put some on top of these and mix them in but I want to get this on here in, in here I should say and get all the weeds out of here look at that pretty butter lettuce nice and the pots that I had um Swiss chard in last year uh the Swiss chard is coming back came out front too so I'm gonna get to watering and I'll try to show you how you pick rhubarb. Maybe I can show you right now. Okay, you don't wanna cut it. You'll injure the plant. So let's see if I can show you. Um, down in here, if you look at the base, down here at the base of the plant, it's connected and you wanna push down like that, kinda twist and pull and you're gonna get this. That's exactly what you want. So it didn't injure the plant, it pulled it away just like it was supposed to. The base of the plant is still perfectly fine, if you can see that. 
hand. You want to pull the biggest ones. You don't want to um, pick more than, there, perfect, another one, more than a third of your plant or two thirds of your plant at one time. So I'm going to get in here and finish that and I'll cut the leaves off, put them in the compost pile. Nobody eats them. They make great compost and look at those nice big stalks. Now my rhubarb, I know somebody's going to say it because they do every year. Oh, it's not ripe. It's not red. This is a green variety. Tastes just like the red variety, just doesn't have that pretty pink blush. I'm hoping my new rhubarb plants, because when I bought this, it said that it was a Victoria red or a ruby or I don't know. It was supposed to be red, but it's not. So anyway, I'm going to pick the rest of that, get it cleaned up, bring it in the house and we'll see. I don't know if I want to dehydrate it now. I think I want it for dessert. We have a little sweet tart dessert. All right, guys, we got a lot to do. There's just, you know, when you run a little homestead and that's what we consider our place. We aren't, you know, we don't have goats and cows and stuff, but we uh, try to be as self-reliant as possible. There's a lot to do. All right, I gotta get busy. Okay, guys, so I, I watered. I, um, I'm not gonna empty the dirt because I want, I want the boys to help me tomorrow because they'll get a kick out of it. They love playing in the dirt. And maybe we'll dump all the dirt in the wheelbarrow and we'll take it around and distribute it. I don't know yet. But I want the grandbabies to be able to help and play in the dirt. A dirty boy is a happy boy. <laughs> so I'm measuring out my rhubarb. I've got four cups in here right now. I'm working on the six cups. And I was going to make, um, I was going to, dehydrate it, but I don't have the heart to do that yet. Rhubarb is one of my very favorites, and usually I have the big mother plant. If you go back, and I'll try to link at the end or somewhere here an i-card at the right-hand corner, upper corner of garden videos last year. My rhubarb was huge, and I would have picked on that one probably twice before I picked on this. And so I'm so thankful I have it, don't get me wrong, but I'm like, I would have had more. So I think tomorrow when I'm at Costco, I'm going to see if they have uh, strawberries that are decent. If they do, and they're, you know, organic and all that good stuff, because my rhubarb is, um, I'm going to go ahead and pick up some strawberries and maybe make some strawberry rhubarb jam. Um, if not, I can make just plain rhubarb jam. It's okay. Or jelly. Whatever you want to call it. Preserves. Um, or I can make a chutney and use that with a pork tenderloin. I know somebody was saying they wanted the chutney. Um, and then freeze the rest or dehydrate the rest. So I have a heaping six cups of rhubarb to deal with tomorrow. That's not a bad, that's not a bad pick. But... If it was last year, this would have been 12 cups because of, off of that big plant. This plant isn't even half as big as that one was, so I'm, I'm a little bummed that that hasn't happened. So we are, we're gonna have a stir fry, and I'm, I'm, um, I actually have some black quinoa that I'm soaking in filtered water, and I'm just gonna soak it. You definitely wanna rinse quinoa because all grains have um, an outer coating that they can disrupt your digestion. They can become bitter. Um, sometimes nuts taste bitter because they've got that coating. And that's a protective coating to keep them from sprouting until the perfect temperatures, perfect humidity, all that stuff has come about. So um, anyways, I, I always soak and rinse my quinoa. This is just going to sit here and soak for a while. and. That's one cup of quinoa. When I cook it, it'll be three cups of water added to that, or chicken broth. And I might do, I might do um, a shrimp broth. I did decide we're gonna have some shrimp, but I'm gonna limit the amount that Michael gets. So I've got the package, I'm gonna limit the serving and load him up with vegetables and quinoa. Quinoa is a little higher in carbs than I would like it to be. Um, and carbs do turn to sugar in the body, but, um, you know, you gotta, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give him some of the 
the pasta substitute. I haven't decided yet, but in any case, we're having a pretty healthy meal. Um, I think quinoa is healthier than and lower carb than if you were serving pasta. And it, it's a healthy whole grain with high protein. It's higher in protein. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm doing, chopping and dropping. So guys, I'm gonna see you tomorrow. I'm anxiously awaiting. Oh, okay, before I go, because I know a few of you have been asking about Buddy, and I, I've been texting back and forth with my daughter. Buddy is doing fantastic. He loves to ride in the Jeep. In fact, she can even buckle him in and he just sits there. Um, <laughs> but he, he likes to steal Ray's seat as soon as Ray gets out of the front seat. He, he takes shotgun. <laughs> And Roxy, their other dog, is kind of following suit. What everybody does, she's pretty much doing. So I think they're gonna see big changes in both of them over the next year as they settle into that family. She's so happy that she's got them in tomorrow because I sent all of his shot records and paperwork up to them. Um, tomorrow he goes to the beauty parlor and he's gonna get a haircut and a shampoo and um, all those long, you know, all that long hair that was hanging there, well, they have really wet weather. And so any mud that he gets in or walking through, you know, bare dirt areas, it flips up onto his belly hair and then you got a mess. So she's gonna get him shampooed and clipped and by the time summer hits, maybe get him clipped one more time so he stays nice and cool. <laughs> Anyways, but he's been a good boy and they absolutely adore him. So we are so happy and you should be too. Cause you know what, if anything ever happens and they couldn't keep him anymore, he will come right back here. And I know that. And so uh, it makes my heart feel very good about what we did. And dad gets to see pictures and videos and all kinds of good stuff. So I'll try to share some pictures that she sent me and um, at the end of the video, and you can see how Buddy's doing. So I can't wait to see you tomorrow. I hope that if you're out there gardening, you let us know what you're doing in your area and what you've got going so far. We've got kind of a stormy night coming in. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. So anyway, all right guys, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Mwah! Here's our buddy. We miss him, but I love hearing all the good things that are happening for him. And they absolutely love him to death.